In this Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree video, I bring you this insane, madness bleed build which is capable of doing more than 30k per hit. And get this guys, the weapon I am using to showcase everything you see in this video isn't even maxed out. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so I'm naming this build the Mad Blood Fiend. It's a build based around a weapon which is probably, well it does probably have the highest rating in regards to causing that blood loss build up. Um, there's as little as two hits guys, applying these to enemies and just destroying their health bars. The weapon is the Blood Fiend's arm and to be honest, it's a weapon I don't think anyone expected to be as capable of such remarkable damage. As I said, the weapon I am using is only a level 24. Level it up again to get even more blood build up. So the weapon scales with strength, dexterity and arcane. The requirements of 28 strength, 11 in that dexterity and 16 in that arcane. So with this build guys, it's all about stacking damage buffs to destroy bosses and harder hitting enemies. While in regards to its everyday use against all those smaller, less potent enemies, damage buffs really don't need to be applied. The only reason I haven't taken this to a level 25 is because to be honest guys, I was just experimenting with a build. I don't really want to waste my materials on a weapon or a build I don't really plan on continue to use. I mean, I like to experiment with builds, but I don't really like to waste my materials on such weapons I don't plan to continue on using. And plus it does so much damage at a level 24 anyway, yeah, I really don't see a need for me to apply one more level to it. But hey, that's just me. If you like the look of this build, this is your kind of weapon. Level it up to a max and do even more crazy damage. Okay, so we stack Madness and Bloodlust by applying these status effects to ourselves. Combine our armor, talismans, tears, and an Ash of War, which all combine to give you insane damage output. And that attack will only get stronger when you hit those enemies. So how it works. Firstly guys, we two hand the Blood Fiend's arm, but also apply that Crag Blade Ash of War to it. The Crag Blade Ash of War buries the weapon within the ground, pulling up rocks to reinforce the weapon and increases its attack power and makes it just easier to break that enemy's stance. We also need to make sure we select the Blood Affinity on this Ash of War too. We also two hand the weapon for the extra damage and then we prioritize the weapon's heavy attack but we charge it by holding down that heavy attack button. What this does is when you pair it with the axe talisman which enhances those charge attacks as well as the two handed swords talisman enhances attacks with two handed weapons we get here an absolute massive damage increase. But to power this weapon up even further we use the Uchi Gatana and Supuku Ash of War on it. What this does is it triggers that bloodlust, which directly results in the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman coming into effect and furthermore buffing our main weapon of the Blood Fiend's arm. In our offhand guys, we use the Frenzied Flame Seal, which with the use of her Howl of Shaburi incantation applies madness to ourselves, which directly results in the fourth talisman of the age one's exhortation furthermore buffing our attack power armor wise because madness is something we do indeed use for the army i'm using the black pudding which again increases damage upon a wearer suffering with madness and for the rest of the armor we are using the rakshasa armor which with each set piece it increases damage dealt to enemies we are also using the other incantation of the golden vow which furthermore increases our attack damage. Now in our flask of wondrous physic we are using the blood sucking crack here which enhances our attacks but at the same time slowly brings down our HP and we're also using the spiked crack here which boosts charge attacks. Now you can swap out the blood sucking crack here if you ain't happy with you constantly losing health maybe go for something like the green bus crystal tier uh, or something else that may help you it's up to you. Taking out the blood sucking crack here though won't be too much of a detriment to your damage output so keep that in mind. It's not an absolute must for this build. And well, it's all about then applying the buffs before battle. Now the order I would do this is, and the reasons why, I'd first use your Wondrous Physic because both the Spike Crack Tier and the Blood Sucking Crack Tier last around 
three minutes, I do believe. I'd then use the Golden Veil Incantation as this lasts 80 seconds. Supuku is 60 seconds, so then use that. Then the Howl of Shariri is 40 seconds, I do believe. And Cragblade is obviously 60 seconds. So in that order, your Wondrous Physic, then use the Golden Veil, then Supuku, then the Howl of Shariri, switch then to the Blood Fiend's Arm, Use the Cragblade Ash of War, again this lasts 60 seconds, then two hand your main weapon and then head into battle people. Remember you want to two hand the Blood Fiend's arm and you want to charge up the attack by holding down a heavy attack button for maximum damage output and you'll just see how quick that bloodlust builds up on those enemies and it just absolutely drains their health. Now if you guys are the items you need to complete this build, for the most part I'll just put links to other videos in the video description. Some of the weapons you need take complete guides, some are just simple paths, but if you are missing a certain item check out the video description and just click on the item you are missing to complete this build. But in regards to the main thing, the main weapon we are using here, the Blood Fiend's Arm, this is a weapon I have heard I'm not sure because I got it straight away and picked it up, didn't think anything of it, but I've heard it's a one-time drop only and you cannot farm it, which is weird to me. So to get this guys, if you haven't already, head to the Clifford's Terminus Grace Point and follow the route I take on the screen. Now you head up on top of this building. Now once you're up here guys, you need to work your way around and you'll end up in the vicinity of many of these blood fiends. Now one of these fellas drops this weapon. Now if you have been here before, and you've taken these enemies out and you miss picking this weapon up i'm not sure it's going to be here for you if you come back uh, so i think you may be out of luck here now if this is the case for you, you can always join my discord link down below ask players there there's many a trades going on not only for weapons but for runes and other materials too so do keep that in mind but hopefully you haven't been here already or hopefully when you did come here you grab this weapon and haven't missed out on it because it is incredible but yes, like I said, the rest of the items needed, I will link in the video description for you guys to get what you are missing. But yes, people, this is the Mad Blood Fiend build. And while I do really hope you guys enjoy, so like I said, it's capable of some absolutely devastating things. Obviously, if enemies and bosses are not immune to that blood loss, uh, this will just absolutely destroy them. So yes, I hope you like it. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more out of the ring, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.